Hi and welcome to my channel. Continuing with Rising Sign readings for the month ahead, which is now August, up to the Rising Sign of Taurus rising. Um, I've already done the month ahead astrological overview um, video for the community tab, um, which is not a card reading. It's showing the um, charts of tropical and true sidereal to follow along um, with the main uh, astrology highlights for the month ahead um, and the energies, how to work with the energies there, which, it, you know, it helps out with the reading as well here. Like it, it, it sort of balances it all out for you. Um, so, yeah, it's there on the community tab already as I'm recording this. So you can jump in there and, and take a look at that. Um, other than that, um, check out the pinned comment and some links in my description box of this video. Um, I just want to say as well, because I don't usually mention this, um, but when I do these rising sign readings, I'm actually doing them for the true sidereal rising signs. So um, might be well worth um, jumping into the description box for the link to get your chart in true sidereal for, for you know generated for free in true sidereal so you can know for sure if if you're a sidereal Taurus rising or whether you're Aries or even Gemini perhaps um, so that you link with the proper um, reading for you you may be Taurus rising, but um, it might be well worth checking that out with the link. It's completely free um, to see in true sidereal if you're actually Taurus rising. Because, um, yeah, because you might be tropical, but you might not be in um, true sidereal. Anyway, let's jump in now. I don't think there's anything more to say there. I think we're done with that so we'll jump in and see what your cards have brought through for you for the month ahead of August we're getting to near the end of the year this is nuts um, yeah so Taurus rises let's see what's come through fifth house okay well that's Leo themed house but it's not in Leo for you it's in Virgo so it's a mix of Leo and Virgo Ooh, full moon. Well, the full, full moon's on the 20th. That'll be in Aquarius. Uh, oh, wow. Actually, this one's good because it's not the full moon eclipse. It's the new moon eclipse, so it's bringing in the new. New moon eclipse in um, early October is going to be in Virgo. We just mentioned the Virgo sign in your Leo house. Huh. Okay. This is bringing in the news, so that's good. And this is like on steroids when it's in, in the eclipse phase. So this one came through first. So full moon, make some tweaks and changes so that you've got the space to bring in the new. Um, now... Yes, this isn't till October, and you think, well, you know, it's only August now, September, October. This has got a three-month window either side, and it's a minimum three-month window. Actually, it can be longer than that, but it's a, at least a three-month window on either side of the actual event where you'll be feeling the energies. You can jump into these energies right now to make any moves make the tweaks and changes to bring in the new with your Virgo sign, Virgo mix of Virgo and fifth house for you because that's where the eclipse is going to hit, your fifth house in Virgo. Dang, okay, what else? Now we've got fourth house in Leo. Home and family mixed with the Leo community, uh, not community, um, 
creativity that's what wow okay i said community for some reason we'll see if anything comes in but um creativity romance um love affairs uh, what else is there fun having fun and this is bringing in the news so something needs to be cleared up and it's clearly not the full moon eclipse so it's not as heavy duty as this guy and i say heavy duty but this is bringing in the new in a powerful, big way. Wow. Okay. Let's see what else is coming in. <gasps> new moon. Aha, guys. Well, this this month's new moon is... um, Yeah, all right. I'm going to move it over here so that I can get them in their timeline properly. Um, the new moon's going to hit on the 4th over here. In some places, it might be the 3rd. Uh, it's going to be a Cancerian new moon it's going to be the later degrees of Cancer but it's during that three day phase of the new moon it's going to move into um, Leo anyway so here we've got the Leo energies again damn Leo and Virgo <laughs> okay now we've got waning gibbous Okay, I'm going to try and get them all in their timelines, as I said before, because clearly there's the full moon. Full moon's hit, three-day window, waning, moving away from being full towards a new. So there's still the reiteration if you haven't been able to do anything or you've sort of dropped off the ball or whatever or forgotten or whatever this is your reiteration jump in this three day window okay the full moon's on the 20th so we're talking well 20th over here so let's just say the window from the 19th to the 23rd for that crescent there on that three day window there after the full moon and this one is ooh Juno, okay. Well, Juno's an asteroid. Now, okay, I'm normally, normally, like I like I did initially, just then, when Juno came out, and I went, uh, yes, there's a lot of full moon energy, but this guy trumps everybody because this guy is the new moon eclipse, bringing in the new. So I think, I don't really get so much of a negativity from this other than if there's any tweaks and changes that need to be cleared up. Perhaps this new moon you can look into that with the mix of Cancer Leo coming through and you've got your fourth house Cancer house there and the fifth house Leo house. So there's Cancer Leo and this guy's Virgo, which is going to be in your fifth house. Yeah, the Leo house. Um, and Leo in your Cancer house. So there's still Leo Virgo um, energies. Cancer Leo Virgo, actually, if you want to put it that way, because the Cancer house, Cancerian house. But what I'm getting from here is start bringing in the new by having a look at the give and the take, the give and receive. Is there equal amounts of reciprocity going on within relationships? And then the full moon can sort that out. You can you can work with that at the full moon. Clear up, make any tweaks and changes. Um, let go of whatever's not working. Make tweaks and changes. Because um, the other thing with Juno, it asks us the question of... Um, whether or not we actually want to be in a relationship at all. But what I'm getting from this, I mean, it may be like that for some people, but more like what I'm getting from this is the idea of, one, yes, balanced reciprocity. Is that happening? If not, clear it up and sort it out because it needs to be. The other thing is, this guy is going to be in the sign of Virgo. Now, we're talking, right, we've got the fifth house of Leo, 
Leo themes, covered by the sign of Virgo, which is health, duty, service to others. But I often say, within that service to others, we have to be of service to ourselves. If we're not filling our own cup, how can we do it for anyone else? You know, we're going to burn ourselves out. So what I'm getting is whatever maybe there's something you want to bring in with the cancer leo new moon on the third fourth where depending on where you you where you're located and maybe bring in some sort of new idea new concept new experience something new that might need some tweaks and changes it could be about balance reciprocity that you've got to look into that making the tweaks and changes with the full moon if you've done nothing on the actual full moon you've got that three-day window clear that out of the way then you're opening the way to jump into those energies bring in the new in a big way it might be it might be bringing in a new relationship or bringing in new within a relationship you know revamping reviving refreshing re 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 because we have um mercury retrograde oh and by the way mercury retrograde is in leo as well here we've got leo energies again cancer leo virgo wow okay So I'm moving these across because I'm not going to fit a big card in there, I don't think. Because these guys are big. Okay, so let's see what else is coming through. Libra, relationships, here we go. <laughs> this energy is diplomatic and gracious. It seeks harmony and balance in relationships. And by the way, this is the other sign that's Venus ruled besides you guys. And Libra's in your sixth, which is the Virgo house. Here we go. We've got th fourth, fifth, and sixth. Ah, uh, now we've got Sag. Sag is further along. Um, this energy imbues power, superior confidence, and enthusiasm with faith, good fortune, and authority. Being, you know, taking the authority to make sure that there's balanced reciprocity, that you're, you're receiving what you're giving in relationships now Sag is in the eighth which is also about shared resources it's it's the Scorpio house shared resources doesn't necessarily mean money it can even mean emotional resources what you share in the relationship you know um but it could be actual resources as well. There might be something to do with that. Let's keep going and seeing because so far it's saying relationship. This, by the way, this card, by the way, I remember uh, the guidebook saying that this was uh, this particular new moon card was an auspicious card to get within the reading from this deck. You know, good luck. I mean, it was apparently meaning good luck and so forth. Um, so you can take that into account too, you know, that there seems to be a whole lot more power with the new moon energy than there is with the full moon energy. I think the full moon energy is more about, you know, making the tweaks, the changes, adjustments, sorting out what works and what doesn't work. Balance reciprocation seems to be right in <clears throat> on top of things. The sun, which is the ruling planet of Leo. Fifth house, Leo. Fifth house is where the eclipse is going to be in October for you. But like I said, don't wait till October to jump into these energies. We're getting the eclipse energies right now as I'm recording this, as I speak. We are in the doorway of both the eclipses. And the first eclipse that's going to come along is the lunar eclipse in Pisces. This is the solar eclipse, so you're not. We're not talking about endings here. We're talking about beginnings. The sixth house, the Virgo house. 
<laughs> is it me or is it... Virgo house in Libra, the work, health and duty area of your life, you know, duty and service to others, including yourself. How many more of these? Okay, we'll see if I can squeeze it along here. So I also take um, notice of what jumps into the middle and we've got the sun and the sixth. So we've got the energy of the sun, you know, vivacious energy of the sun your immortal spirit purpose and destiny is involved I don't think I read that before for you just a minute ago um, but yeah service to yourself as well as others something new bringing some sort of something new into the situation the energy is communicative, mischievous, lively, witty, and informative. Stimulating exchange is possible. Gemini. Now, Gemini and Virgo are Mercury ruled and Mercury's retrograding. And I think I already mentioned this, but if I didn't, guess where Mercury's retrograding? In Leo. <laughs> so we've got Leo energy again communicate more fun in a healthy way into some kind of relationship with balance re reciprocation now we've got Pisces this energy is wistful endlessly loving compassionate and forgiving it confuses and softens resolve okay so now we've got the gentle dreamy energies of Pisces which is in your 11th, the Aquarius house. <laughs> Friendships is coming up when I mention the Aquarius house with your Pisces in the Aquarius house. I mean, if you want a relationship to last, there has to be a measure of friendship and getting along with the person. <laughs> it's not going to get far if you're not getting along with the person in, in general. But I'm not getting those energies. I'm just sort of making a point. Bring a bit of dreaminess and fun into things, I think, is what's asked for here. Quincunx, complexity. Okay, so this is a bit of a difficult aspect. However, it doesn't have to continue to be difficult. It's probably, I feel more so difficult in terms of that. Um, it hasn't been addressed yet. And so there's been a bit of difficulty because there's been no forward movement in some way, I would say. I mean, relationships, uh, uh, Aries got a relationship reading too, actually. Um, relationships can be complex, complexity, you know, there is complexity, but doesn't mean it's impossible. It doesn't mean it's going to always be difficult. Sag is freedom loving as well. So the, the ability to be expansive and free, freedom loving and having a measure of freedom you know balance reciprocation having a measure of freedom to express yourself within a relationship with both parties cancer the doula well, we've got that cancer house third house did we get well we got gemini the Gemini house is what Cancer is covering. So now we've got third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And did we get eighth and eleventh? Three, four, five, six, eight, and eleven. Okay. Now, first house. Well, that's your rising sign, self. So. This has got a lot to do with you, obviously. Mercury, here we go. Mercury's in here to communicate. Now we've got Gemini and Virgo in here. 
and obviously Leo. So communicate. Yeah, I, th I think it's it's really, I mean, yes, they're there, but they're bookended by the new moon energies. And like I said, this guy trumps all of it with the eclipse, powerful eclipse energies anyway. So we're looking at bringing in the new and in a healthy way because that's going to be in Virgo. Third house, here we go again. Gemini house in Cancer. How do you perceive things within this relationship? Do you perceive them in a complex way that it's too difficult to, to sort out because there's not really difficult energies here? I mean, yes, tweaks and changes, but the, yeah, I think I'm going over and over and over and over again somehow i think you've got the point um okay so these may or may not have reversals we'll walk, walk through it if there is well this one's not reversed mid heaven pinnacle i mean the mid heaven is about career and can be found anywhere from the ninth to tenth house somewhere on or around the ninth tenth house Your 10th happens to be in Aquarius, and that was Aquarius house in Pisces. I get, hmm, I mean, there might, might be something different with the rest of the cards, but I'm getting here. It's not so much, even though it's the Midheavens about career, I think in this instance, it's more, like the word says, pinnacle, getting to the pinnacle of the situation, getting to the pinnacle, you know, she's reaching up, getting to the pinnacle of bringing more sun and joy and happiness into, you know, a relationship perhaps and making it much more healthy all round with the balanced reciprocation of give and receive, you know. Second house resources. I think I mentioned something about that, didn't I? Resources, did I? With the eighth house, I think I did. We got the eighth house, didn't we? Yes, Edge. Shared resources. Well, this is upright, see, so this isn't a problem. Maybe it's got something to do with resources that you can somehow look at resources to, to um, be part of bringing in the new and making whatever changes and adjustments sometimes bringing something new things need to be adjusted and maneuvered in order for everything to work you know like a well-oiled machine so to speak and then you've got everything moving right so you can then jump into bringing in the new in a big powerful way with the virgo fifth house um eclipse energies what else have we got Gemini cross-pollinate. Now, we've got Gemini twice. The communication is really coming through. And Mercury, you know. Mercury ruled Gemini. So communication is a big part of this. And it's upright. So that's a good. Neptune, another upright card. Vision. Communicate your vision to whoever else is um, this is with. Another upright, Virgo digest, easy to digest energies. Doesn't seem to be anything complex apart from this sucker. <laughs> but relationships can be complex, but that doesn't mean they have to stay that way, you know? And there's so much good new moon energy wanting to come through. Aha, we've. Uh, now, I did mention. Aquarius in the 10th but it didn't necessarily come through because this is the Aquarius house right now with the 11th uh, so Aquarius yeah Aquarius house so it's community see I think 
it's not so much the community thing which is why this is in reverse because it's not really an outside other people I think it's more about a friendship or a romance it could otherwise it could be because it's cross pollinate here which suggests you know cross pollinating meaning moving from one to another to another in a sense and communicating with a network and perhaps that's the other point is since this is in reverse maybe this hasn't been happening and perhaps needs to and then we turn it upright in that instance what's this guy <gasps> Pluto rebirth and it's upright and Pluto's in rever uh, reverse. Pl Pluto's in retrograde as well. The retrogrades aren't here to punish us. They're here to help us work through those energies to uh, and open ourselves up to the opportunities that each retrograde gives us is a, uh, makes available to us letting us review and see what's available to us to propel us forward to nudge us forward to shunt us forward even in a gentle way because neptune you know pisces gentle energies um but still have that rebirth i've turned this around because i think it's either that you haven't been able to cross-pollinate and communicate with others and this is saying you can or it's about the friendship side of things and having a having that closer friendship with a significant other or a just a simple friendship of is it balanced is it balanced give and take is it is there a group dynamic is there is there balanced reciprocation within a group dynamic of friendships you know, these are the things we can look at. And that might be why it was in reverse. It was the only one in reverse from that deck. But there's the, the, a chance of rebirth. So this may not be a romantic relationship. It might be a friendship. Um, Midheaven was here. It could even be a business partnership because we've got resources, right? We've got the second house, Taurus house which is also in Gemini, in the sign of Gemini for you. And we did have Gemini come in, communicating your resources, communicating about your resources, communicating to others to replenish your resources maybe even, but this is upright, so it's not a negative. Communicate what resources to help your um, work life perhaps in some way your career and this is where starting communicating your needs wants needs balance reciprocation bringing in whatever new getting prepared and used to it and making adjustments and then opening the way for everything to be healthier and new and big and vibrant and vital i want to say okay so now what is your numerology pride pride's not at all oh, sorry pride's not necessarily a negative thing you know and that is the base chakra color which is about grounding stability security material security here we've got material again um one emotional vitality and personal power nine is big beginnings big endings you can't get much bigger than the freaking eclipses and you've got the better one <laughs> because it new moon eclipse is by far a much easier energy than a full moon one let me tell you that's why i wasn't worried when i saw the new moon was you know the eclipse was in the new moon um format not the old one old uh old not the full moon so yeah that comes to one and nine big beginnings big endings and spirituality yeah Yeah, having pride in yourself, having pride, healthy pride, see? I mean, being overly boastful and, and that sort of thing is not a, a very balanced. 
whether you or someone else is that way. Again, I'm not getting negative from this, though. So I think it's more about having pride in your creativity, because remember, we've got the Leo energies. Manifestation, and there's your heart chakra color. Eight, money and stability, bam, and here we've got resources again, and the career, midheaven. What's this guy? Completion, we've got another nine, big beginnings, big endings, and look, this a lot of purple, which is used as a color. Um, it, the purple color is used as a cure in feng shui if there's any money issues. So, and you've got purple doubled up there, see? So, yay. Okay, so what do these guys say? It's kind of strange, but when you know exactly what you want to create, remember, fifth house create the Virgo, um, first you have to define it in terms of the end result, second you have to physically move toward it, and finally you must let go of how you think it will actually show up, at which point the thing you want starts coming to you on its own terms from a direction completely unexpected, not unlike a cat, <laughs> the universe. Love these colours. Reality is not that you are weak and dream of becoming strong, poor and dream of becoming rich, alone and dream of having friends, but that you're already strong, rich and among friends, yet at times you dream that you're not. Silly, the universe. Yeah, you've got this new moon energy. Do not worry about it. Do not stress, even with this, even if there has been a bit of complexity and difficulty, if even if it seems a bit scary, maybe, will this work, won't it? Yes, it will. Look, this guy's saying so. We're in the portal of both eclipse energies now. And this one's saying new moon, not full moon. So nothing's going to be difficult for you. Run with these energies, seriously. You've got nothing to lose. It's bringing in the new for you. Question, what do rich folk daydream and visualize about? Yeah, whatever they want. Answer, sorry. Yeah, whatever they want. Question, and what do poor folk daydream and visualize about? Answer, yeah, whatever they want. You're coming along so quickly, the universe. I wonder if... Maybe I'll put them up there. If it was just about surviving, getting by and keeping things the way they are then how would you explain your wild imagination? If it was just about sacrifice, selflessness and altruism, then how would you explain your burning desires? And if it was just about thinking, reflection and spiritual stuff, then how would you explain the physical world? Get the picture? Want it all? That's what it's there for. Vroom, vroom, the universe. <laughs> In other words, it's ready for you. Are you ready to jump in and take advantage of these energies? They want you to do that. Today you are a magnet for infinite abundance. Yay! Divine intelligence and unlimited love. Yes, yeah, see, and love doesn't necessarily mean romantic. It can be friendships or business. Love of, you know, if it's a business partnership, it could be love of whatever service product that you're providing. You know, anyway, actually, this has always been true, that you're a magnet for these wonderful things. Rock on the universe. Then we have this. What good does it do knowing approximately where the treasure lies, yet never digging, having a bank account with millions in it, but never writing a check? 
or discovering the fountain of youth but never drinking a drop. You must live the truths you discover. You must break your old rules, defy logic, be the change, dig, write the check and drink eternally one little step after another. There's no other way. Yeah. No other way, guys. These energies are for all of us. I may not have this rising sign, but I'm getting some, <laughs> you know, advice from this myself. Now, what do the guardian angels want you guys to know? Prayer. Dear God, help me always to remember that this present life is but a fleeting moment within eternity. Help me always to remember that this life is but a dream. Help me always to remember that you exist within everyone and everything. Help me always to remember that love is all there is and all else is an illusion. Thank you. Manifestation. Uh, gratitude. Thank you. This is a heartfelt thanks to you from someone you recently helped in some way. I, your guardian angel, also wish to thank you for the unconditional love you emanate to the earth, humanity and those around you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You are eternally blessed. May peace, grace and love forever guide you along your sacred path of completion with bringing in the new. Oh, yay, rainbow. You are a jewel, even though you may not see it. Even in the darkest times, you shine eternally bright. You are surrounded by an aura of love and a pot of gold waits beyond the horizon. All will clear soon. See, this complexity is going away. Trust and continue to follow your dreams. Uh, where was Neptune, Vision? Uh, there was one that said about dreams, wasn't there? Maybe it was Pisces. I thought there was something about dreams, following your dreams. Anyway, trust and continue to follow your dreams. You are eternally blessed. You know what? I'm going to swap it out. Prayer can go over here. Manifestation is where rainbow should be, I think. Or maybe we'll swap it again. You know, someone is grateful to you because of something you did for them. All right. And so you're manifesting from that because of your good deeds. Right. And then the completion is that you end up getting your manifestation. A pot of gold waits beyond the horizon. All will clear soon. Trust and continue to follow your dreams. On that note, I think I'll leave it there and wish you all the best of luck, Taurus Rises, for August and beyond. And until next time, bye for now.